Hallelujah. Praise be unto the name of the Lord. Can you shout the name of God wherever you find yourself? Indeed, the Lord is gracious, kind, marvelous, and caring always. And what can we say but thank you to him? Indeed, it is not by our might and by our power, but it is by the Spirit of the living God who has given us the opportunity to be here. If you believe me, shout a wonderful Amen wherever you find yourself in this season and time. I would like to welcome you specially to our program for today. God bless you for joining in and may God be with you and your spirit as we come to understand the knowledge of his word in this season and this time. Praise be unto the name of the Lord. Shall we pray as we begin our service for today? Gracious Father, the Lord of glory, we thank you. We give you all the glory, the adoration and thanksgiving in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. There is none like you and there is none compared to you. Who is like unto thee, O God, among the gods who is like unto thee? There is none that is compared to your glorious majesty. And this is why we say you are great, you are kind, you are loving and you are caring. There is none like you and there is none compared to you. Take all the praise today. The glory and the honor is yours in his glorious and prosperous name. And every child of God said, Amen. God bless you. Be seated in his glorious presence wherever you find yourself in this pivotal point and season in time. And um, uh, I want to specially thank each and everybody for participating this far to our prayer and fasting. You know, times of prayer and fasting, I will tell you, are not easy. Indeed, they are very, very difficult times that we ought to make sacrifices of. But indeed, with God, all things are possible. And we are glad to have this opportunity to participate in such. So I want to thank each and every one of you for joining in. Well, this afternoon, um, initially, as was seen on our Saturday Revival flyer, it was supposed to be... Um, Lady Pastor Esla Agnes Yakato of Love Arena Church of Wasi Zone 2 and Pastor Samuel Kenneth Aidan of Love Arena Church of Wasi Zone 1 or the main zone in itself. However, they are unavailable at this pivotal season and time, so that is why I have filled in this slot as it ought to be done. And it is the first of its kind that we are endeavoring in this season and time. You could say this is a return of our afternoon encounter services for this short period of time. Next week, we are going to be meeting again for such a program. And I'm believing and trusting God that God himself is going to show his power worthy and mighty in that time and season. So I will advise all of you to be there. Come and hear what God has to say to you, and I believe that you'll be blessed in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Well, it is time for us to listen to the word of God, and I would like to continue on what I was sharing with you the other day about pride. I told you, or I gave you particular instructions. And I'm going to continue on these instructions. Why? Because this is what God has asked me to do in this season and time. Praise God. So bear with me as I share with you what God wants me to share with you. And I believe that you shall be immensely blessed and you shall receive of the wonderful blessing of God in the name of our Lord and Master Savior, Jesus Christ. You will recall that recently for my session in the morning, I had gone a long way to share with you in the book of Psalm and the book of John and many other things. Today, I'm going to go on in that path and I'm going to share with you more on it. Let's open our Bibles.
Let's open our Bibles to the book of First Peter. Chapter 5 and the verse number 5. Then afterwards we'll open to the book of James chapter 4 and the verse number 6. It says on the screen, that likewise, ye younger, submit yourself unto the elder. Yea, all of you be subject to one another and be clothed with humility. For God resisted the proud and giveth grace to the humble. Praise God. Now, I hope you just understand what you read. If you did not, let's go in much more deeper to understand. Let's use the message translation. It says, And you who are younger must follow your leaders. But all of you leaders and followers alike are to be down to earth with each other. For God has had it with the proud, and he takes delight in just plain people. One way or the other, dear brethren, you agree with me that sometimes as people of God, we can be proud in our speech, our code or our mode of conduct, and in many other things that we should not be proud of or proud in. Why? Because this is the will of the Lord. And it's not something that you should always be proud of. Because I understand that there are types of pride. The same way there are levels of faith, there are types of pride. If one understands the principles of faith, one is able to understand how to move to the maximum level. I'll be here with me. One is able to understand how to move to the maximum level of believing in Jesus Christ, the Son of the Living God, and then to the maximum level of being able to heal the sick, raise the dead, and do all sorts of wonderful things in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Are you agree with me? That as these gifts continue to come to us, pride starts to settle in. Why? You see, first of all, you must note that there is good pride and there is also bad pride. The good pride is taking pride in the fact that you have been privileged enough to be selected by God himself to do his exploits and to do his work. Apart from this, nothing else. Apart from this, what did I say? Nothing else. Nothing else. Absolutely nothing else. God has given you the privilege, the opportunity, the ability. That is what you should be proud of. There are other things that you can be proud of. For example, we find an example um, in the book of Matt, uh, sorry, uh, let's go to the book of Genesis chapter 1 and the verse number 26. And then over here in this scripture, we find that it says, Let us make human beings in our image, make them reflect in our nature, so they can be responsible for the fish in the sea, the birds in the air, the cattle, and yes, earth itself and any, every animal that moves on the face of the earth. So naturally, we are created to dominate. And as we dominate, there is a sense of purpose. I hope you understand where I'm coming from. There is a sense of purpose. So as this sense of purpose comes in, that is where sometimes, in particular cases, 
pride begins to settle in. Praise be unto the name of the Lord. That's where sometimes pride begins to settle in. It says, let us make human beings in our image. Make them reflecting our nature. So meaning that you pertain or you have the nature of angels who are in heaven. So as you have this nature, obviously, that pride is going to settle in you that indeed I dominate over the whole earth. And once this dominion has been given to you, there is a sense of purpose. The, base, the basicity of what I'm trying to say is this. Do not allow this dominion to get into your mind before you now start being proud and be or be going to cloud nine. No. Reason why I'm saying is this. Dominion is power. When you look for synonyms of dominion, you are likely to find the word power. I hope you understand where I'm coming from. You are likely to find the word power. So, as you find the word power in dominion, it means that God has given to you power to dominate over the earth. Over the times from the Old Testament, there are very proud people in the Bible. People who are too proud of themselves. And that is why it said in the message translation of the scripture that we read in the New Testament, in the book of 1 Peter, chapter 5, and the verse number 5, that we should submit ourselves for God resisted the proud and given grace to the humble. That is the King, King James. What I meant was the message translation, which was talking to us about God has had it with the proud. It means that he is fed up of proud people. Why is he fed up of proud people? Because they always boast of themselves. They always boast of themselves, who they are. Brothers and sisters in Christ, you do not need to boast of yourself before people know that indeed you are a child of God. That is not how it works and that is not how it functions. It hasn't functioned like that before and it's not yet to function like that anytime soon. Come to an understanding of this. Because one thing you have to realize is that this dominion that has been given to you gives you a sense of purpose. This sense of purpose can mean anything. Alright? This sense of purpose means absolutely anything. Praise God. So, as it gives you the sense of purpose, obviously you start to feel more revered, highly revered in society. Right? It starts to show. Because it is something that God created for it to be there. When He created us, to dominate he didn't you know he saw it coming but he still did it because he knew that at the end of the day jesus christ would come to come and correct it is that clear so what i'm trying to say is this and this is basic advice there is pride in everyone and i'm not exempting myself this is me i'm the one standing here i'm the one talking to you i'm telling you that there's pride in everyone resist flee from pride Flee from pride because sometimes your way of speech, your manner of speech, sometimes depicts pride. You can't see somebody on um, here, or I mean, in fact, take for instance, there was a particular time during just these 16 days of intensity. We had a um, lady, Pastor Rowena, the director of the La Varina Church ministry programs, come on. And then someone was busily questioning. You know, ask me how you have to join the meeting. You are busily questioning how she's a pastor. Asking all sorts of questions of so much depth. And I was explaining to her 
how she's a pastor in our church. Because we, this is one of the essential people that we have in our ministry who is serving the Lord diligently. Don't go around and be asking foolish questions like, I hope you know what a pastor means and how to ordain a pastor. You don't go around and say things like, it smells of pride. Be humble for once. That was what the, 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 the person told me. Ask him all sorts of questions. Of, of, of uh, questions that does not concern you. Humility is the best policy. Because that's the people that grace comes for if you don't know. Remain humble to every servant of God that comes to you. No matter how much the person has offended you before. Remain humble to the person. If the person has been given a position in the church, you remain humble to the person. You respect that person with that title. How am I making myself clear to you? Don't allow the devil to use you. Don't allow the devil to use you to get what he wants. Don't allow it for any reason whatsoever. Don't allow it. Because that is exactly what the devil wants. Praise God. That is exactly what the devil wants. For him to use you and then throw you away. Because obviously, if God resisted the proud, what makes you think the devil is going to condone it? He's the one giving it, but do you think that he'll condone it? Let's think about ourselves. Let's think about the speech. Let's think about our talking. The way we talk, the way we associate ourselves with people, the way we relate to people, we are not better than anyone. The only people that we are better than is the devil. And we must flee all things that the devil is bringing into our midst to destroy the relationship that we have with God. And this is one of them. Pride. It is only pride. It means that, you see, let me go back to that scenario, that example, or that instance that I just stated. You see, asking questions like, how is she ordained to become a pastor? It's very, very, it smells of pride. Why? Because you feel you know better. You feel you know better that Jesus Christ cannot ordain such a person. Why? Because of what they've done to you before. Ask yourself that question. It smells of pride. Be humble for once. And stop questioning things that does not concern you. When we came on to when Jesus Christ came onto the face of the earth, let me put this question to you. When Jesus Christ came onto the face of the earth, did he not only anoint them with the Holy Spirit before they were able to go and do the things that they were doing? Did they not receive the Holy Spirit before they could go and heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers? Because as they have received freely, they are to give what? Freely. Yes. Did he ask you to come and create Bible school? Is it Bible school that verifies that one is legible enough? Is it ordination that, legif uh, uh, that is making the person legible enough that he or she is a pastor? Is that what enables one to become a pastor? Listen, let me tell you something. You can go to all the Bible schools on the face of the earth. If you are not anointed, if you are not sanctified, if you will not receive of the Holy Ghost fully, there's no way that that certificate will even be able to give you that anointing that you are looking for. There's no way. And that is the truth of the matter. Let's stop deceiving ourselves. Let's stop deceiving ourselves. This classless, baseless, foolish thoughts of Bible school verifying people is what I don't understand. Nowhere in the Bible, nowhere in the Bible does it say that we should go to Bible school. People use this scripture. Let me go to the Bible. Because those, I'm fed up of those type of questions. 
You better stop asking them. It smells of pride. It means that you feel like you know better. If you, you feel like you know better and you feel like you, you are better. So such people cannot be pe- uh, pastors or whatever you think you can classify them as. I'm going to show you a particular scripture. And get yourself ready for what I'm about to um, show you. Let's go to the book of 2 Timothy chapter 2 and the verse number 15. It says, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Ask yourself this question. From the times of Moses, Jacob, Jesse, Mary, Jesus Christ, all the people that God used, Hezekiah, Isaiah, ask yourself, did you go to Bible school? So how is it that they were so powerful? That's it over there. That's what you are seeing on screen over there. Steady to show thyself approval to God. Steady. Does not mean that go and sit in a classroom as foolish as you are, pay school fees, and go and study the word of God. Are you stupid? Study to show thyself approval to God means that you should open your Bible and read it for yourself. Steady to show that you are worthy, approved of God. Because a workman need them not be ashamed. The last thing that you want to do, the last thing that you want to do is to be ashamed in front of the devil. When you are binding and casting demons and you do not have the word of scriptures in your mind, in your mouth, because you've not studied. It brings you shame. It brings you embarrassment. That is what it means. It says, A workman needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of God. Meaning that rightly telling the truth. Rightly preaching the truth. That's what he's telling you over here. Such questions smell of pride. You don't know better than God. You don't know better than him. Say that maybe you don't understand because you've not caught it in the spirit yet. Say that you don't understand because you've not caught it in the spirit yet. I I, I repeat. Don't see somebody and judge them over here. I'm speaking on the behalf of everybody over here. Every pastor that I know personally that I come in, I'm speaking on the behalf of them. If you feel like you cannot believe the fact that most of us young people are pastors, find your way back to the world. Because God himself is the one who has brought us. If we were not worthy, he wouldn't have sanctified us. Say that you've not caught it in your spirit yet that this person is that powerful. This person has that kind of ability to be able to achieve this. Therefore, as a pastor, they can be able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that thinking could ever ask or think through the power of our Lord and Master Savior, Jesus Christ. But no, you'd rather ask foolish questions. You'd rather ask unnecessary questions. Did God bring ordination for you? Is it not the Holy Spirit that he brought for you? No, answer me. Did God bring ordination for you? Laying of hands is something that every Christian should be able to do. Yes. And it depends on how much you study to show thyself approved unto God. That your spirit grows. And as it grows, your laying of hands becomes more powerful. That's why some of us are still at the level that we are because we do not study to show thyself approved unto God. And it is because of the foolish pride that has resided in our hearts for too long. Today, I am here to remove it. God gave you dominion. Don't let that dominion now enter your head. 
and then be saying foolishness. Don't let that dominion get into your head and be saying waiting no concern you. God has what God has set aside. Let no man put asunder. When God joins two people together, let no man put that marriage word asunder. That is what I'm saying. When God has sanctified people, don't go and stand somewhere and then put them aside. Humble yourself, listen to them. Because God speaks through everyone, especially those he has sent. Especially your pastors. Especially the gift unto men. And you know that anybody can be a gift unto man. We are no different from you. We are humans just like you. Do you know why we were appointed to be gifts unto men? I'm coming to tell you why. We were appointed as gifts unto men because we were ready to avail ourselves to such. We were ready to be sanctified for the edifying of the body of Christ. Yes, we were ready to be sanctified to receive of God. To receive of God. To receive of the beautiful, the marvelous, and the wonderful things. Sita Ali bro Unogosti. And to help his people to go on the right way. That is it. So anybody can be a gift unto God. Anybody at all can be an evangelist. If they dedicate themselves their time. If they study to show their self-approval to God. They can be a gift. As they receive the Holy Spirit, as they grow, they receive conviction to go out and preach the gospel. These are evangelists. Everybody that you see walking around, preaching the word of God, using the rhapsody of realities, being the person, a pastor or not, that's a gift unto man. That's the evangelist. That's the pastor that you are seeing. That is why automatically, when I, when I went into Accra Ghana Zone first, that was where I met my people. We started with the rhapsody automatically because i used to preach a lot based on the rhapsody people started calling me pastor i didn't have to fight for it it was right there in front of me the whole time why because god is with us god who sent us know why we are here so it is not your prideful questions that are going to drop us down we have seen worse Warn yourself. Now, to the main topic of the day, humility. If we are saying we should not be proud, how then? Child of God, must we be humble? How do we humble ourselves? It's a very good question. First of all, to humble thyself. Learn to accept God's people that he has brought to you. That's number one. Learn to accept God's people. Learn to accept people of God that has been brought to you. Listen, all the pastors that are in this church, let me tell you one thing. It is not because it is a church why we make them pastors. With the roof of the love arena, with or without the roof. In other words, with or without the church, they are still pastors. When you have personal interaction with them about the things of God, you tend to find out that there are particular key things that they will talk to you about that indeed is relevant for the body of Christ in this season and time. And through this, as I grow in the spirit day by day and through all the things, the seasons and time that I've seen, different things all together combined. One of the things I will thank God for every time and every season is the ability to be able to identify such people. Because when I see such, I identify them. When I know that they are set apart to do great works, I know. And that is how we ordain pastors in love. That's how we select them. Being a pastor, being an evangelist comes with a lot of scars. Sometimes, members show exceptional characters 
when it comes to accepting scars huh? accepting scars of different calibers and of different types and when they do this it shows a sense of purpose a sense of leadership then based on their knowledge of the word of god we train them in their sub ministry and then they are ready to be equipped we train them based on our standards that is the way we carry ourselves here in other words not in pride but i'm saying our rules and regulations that we have some of the things that you should do as a pastor some of the things that you should not do for example don't go and fornicate don't be found cheating because when we find you cheating we will, we will disgrace you because it's not right as a child of god to be doing such so such rules and regulations that is what we train them based on but apart from this the sole reason why we pick out pastors in this church is because of the gift that they have in them if you don't understand how gifted they are if you don't understand the level of spirit that i am on to see such a gift please don't judge them from a distance and say that they don't know what they are about they don't know what they are doing or they are not approved of your kind because sometimes same particular things actually gives off a judgment that you've not given same particular things about particular people because i mean there are a lot of people in this ministry that are times people have come to me you know i've been in the ministry longer i've been here for the past six years this is my first day this is my second day so obviously when people see other pastors online then they come to me and then they ask me that ah, how is this one a pastor how is that one a pastor there have been many backbiters about people in this church and what i'm telling you is that we don't select just because they come to bible school just because they come to love arena it is because of the gift that they have the gift that they pertain the gift that is in them to do that of which is right i hope i'm being clear to you the only way that i see these gifts are through the help of the holy spirit and it is the holy spirit that makes one humble so i honestly i used to i will tell you the truth i used to judge pastors a lot based on their previous actions and what they've done i mean there are a lot of some of there are some of the actions that are there obviously you'll be tempted to give a judgment in your head but what i want to tell you today is that it's not right so stop it because that is the reason why grace is not available for us stop judging people in your mind leave what is for god for god leave it alone god has given you people come and listen to the word of god then you'd rather be judging them based on their previous life the bible then says again that if any man is a new creature all things are passed away behold all things have become new so if all things have become new why are you still using the old why are you still living in the past the past is hard a way to move it's very hard to move away from it's very hard to move away from it's difficult i tell you i won't lie to you about it i kid you not it is a very difficult thing to do for you as a child of god to forget about the past especially if your past is very rocky ha pains struggles betrayals hate envy that is a rocky past it's hard to forget about it but through the holy spirit and through god all things are possible i hope you are here with me brothers and sisters in christ all i'm trying to say in these few minutes is that i beg of you please and please remain humble unto god the people that God has given to you, honor them. There are a lot of scars that we endure for you. There are a lot of scars that we endure for you. As the pastors and the leaders of God who have been appointed. And for the members that are growing and are coming. Because in Love Arena, I see everybody as a leader. That is why even members can lead. I don't have a problem. So long as you understand what you are coming to do, so long as you understand and you have that sense of purpose that you are coming to do something for God, I don't have a problem. 
That's why yesterday, Brother Morris led, and I told him something, and I'll say publicly on this set right now, that it was an error for him to have remained a brother for this long. I was focused on the other people and other things as well. So that's why it's important to keep the maintenance of aim, maintenance of focus. Very important, because you may lose track of pivotal things that may actually take your ministry to the next level. One of the examples I like to use is Pastor Max. And with, I mean, he has ministered here before. I don't know if most of you remember him. Since 2021, he has not been here again. Um, I think that was during one of our yearly conferences around this time. Anyways, uh, apart from that, what I was trying to say was that in, he is a Christ Embassy pastor. And in Christ Embassy, I mean, for you to be a cell leader alone is 10 key. How much more is a pastor? Hey, Christ Embassy, a cell leader. You will do things that you never you never expected yourself to do. But if you allow God to use you, He will use you indeed. Ah, there were moments where we were on meeting. I was on a meeting where I was monitoring the meeting for Pastor Max at that time. And then he had to endure all sorts of scars. Ah, just then, as we were on the meeting, people just jumped on the call, started making noise, insulting him. Ah! It was, uh, I mean, it was, a, it was a sight to see, honestly. Not a sight to see that we are thankful for what happened, but I'm trying to say that these are scars that we endure, and I've even endured more. Ah, if I say I'm sitting down to share with you my life story, we will spend more than five hours over here. And can, uh, up to, from my life story, that is when I knew what I was doing now, up till now. We'll sit here for more than five hours, I'm telling you. That's the truth of the matter. That's the truth of the matter. But it is by God's grace that I've been selected to do this. And as, as long as I live, I will continue to share the truth to you. To tell you what is right and what is wrong. Because if I don't, it's the Lord that is going to hold me responsible at the end of the day. And I'm not going to allow you to come and put me in trouble. So be humble. How do you, how do you humble yourself? Have the Holy Spirit. That is all that you need. Humility comes from the Holy Spirit. That is why you find most of our pastors being very humble to other pastors. Be they of different levels or whatever. Humility is with every pastor. Every pastor has to show humility. I'm telling you. Every pastor has that characteristic. Why? Because of their work. And it should show in you as a, as a member. It should show in you as a leader that you are humble. Yes, and I'm talking to specifically the members who are here to become leaders. Because members eventually will grow. I told you in Avarina, everybody, every member is a leader. If you are ready to do it, you study to show that self approval of God. You study your word, you study your word, you develop yourself through the Holy Spirit, through effectual fervent prayer. Because it avails much. You pray for direction. You pray for speed. You do the work of God. You evangelize people. You bring more people to church. All these things are the growth of the Holy Spirit that is inside you. Hallelujah. All these things are the growth of the Holy Spirit that dwells in you. And to God be the glory for it. Great things that he has done. Great things that he will still do. Amen. So I am praying that as we have shared what we have shared today, all of us will learn how to be humble. Now, stand up to your feet. Let us pray and then close the message. Gracious Father, the Lord of glory, we thank you for this pivotal point and season and time that you have given to us. Yes, we are here. It is not by our might and by our power, gracious Father, but it is by your Spirit of the Lord that has been given unto us to do all the wonderful things that we are able to do in this pivotal point and season in time. We ask, O oh Lord, that as we have gathered to listen to your word, may this word bless us and transform us mightily 
in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. May every crow sent by the devil, seeking to steal this word away from our hearts, find its way back to its sender. May it find its way back to its sender and may it be killed when it gets to its sender. To send a warning off to the sender, that be very careful, for we are on the Lord's side. We love you, O oh Lord. We adore you. We give you all the glory and the praise. In Jesus' name, amen. And everybody said, Amen.